Hi, this is Helena Hart from CommitmentConnection.com and welcome to my interview with Adrienne Everhart on dating tips for strong, smart, successful women. Adrienne is just a brilliant coach and she really embodies what it means to be a strong, smart and successful woman. I just remember the first time I spoke with her years ago, I remember just hanging up the phone and thinking like, wow, this is one of the most brilliant people I've ever spoken to. I was just blown away by her intelligence and I know that she has some really amazing tips to share with all of you today. So welcome, Adrian. Thank you so much for being here today. Hi, Helena. Thank you so much for having me. I'm just, I've been so excited to talk with you today because, you know, there's so many amazing women out there who are really successful in their career and in other areas of their life, and they just haven't gotten that committed, loving relationship yet. And I know you are one of those women yourself, so if you wouldn't mind, you know, explaining to everyone maybe how you got to become a dating and relationship coach. Oh, well, that is all because of you in one part. Helena and I kind of go way back. <laughs> but um, Helena was my uh, coach. You were my coach. And I really just hit rock bottom. I had read every book. I had found every guide. I had purchased everything I could off the Internet, trying to find the answer to what was it that I was doing wrong. I was successful. I was smart. I had a good income. Everything was really working out for me except my love life. So after going to so many therapists, and I was married at the time, a marriage therapist, many marriage therapists, we found ourselves, you know, my husband and I, our marriage ending, and we were just helpless. So when I got back out in the dating world, and it happened with the next guy, and then it happened with the next guy, I was like, my goodness. I've got to do something to change this. I need to figure out how all this works. And when I found the answer to not only heartbreak, but how to date, how to get yourself out there and get men to respond to you and how to grow that amazing relationship that feels where you feel confident, loved, and you know you're saying and doing the right things. When I found out how to do that through you, through Roy Ray, I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. It was easy. I love that. And I know you recently just got married again to an amazing guy. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. And you know, this guy and I, it was really complicated because we were both a little bit older. You know, we're not in our twenties anymore. And you know, he, he's past his thirties and we're moving on into life and it gets a lot more complicated. And so I really especially love to talk to women who are in their 30s, their 40s, their 50s, and I even have clients into their 60s because dating with technology is such an odd thing for so many of us to do. And texting has completely changed how men want to communicate with women in dating. So I'm really just cracking the code on all of that, figured it all out, and that's what I help my clients do. And hopefully it leads to a happy, successful marriage. I love that. And we definitely should talk about that technology and texting and how to respond to a guy. Adrian's just a complete yeah. expert on that. So, but first I wanted to just, you know, jump right in and ask you, what are some of the biggest mistakes or struggles you see with strong, smart, successful women when it comes to dating and relationships? Oh, that's such a good question. Well, we kind of tend to think we know it all. <laughs> you know, we're so confident in our job. We're so confident um, at how we become this strong, independent, intelligent woman. And we believe in equality in the workplace, and it works so well there. However, when you come home and you're with a guy, or if you're on a date with a man, this goes back to caveman stuff. It goes back to allowing the man to be in his masculine energy and allowing the woman to be in her feminine energy. And quite frankly, a lot of times we, as women, we think very differently than men. Of course, we can figure things out sometimes faster. We sometimes know a better way to do things. And if you're on the guy all the time with your intelligence, with your thinking and your masculine energy, this is just going to push him away. So all of my clients are really smart, amazing, you know, gifted, educated women, and they are using that same masculine energy that has 
allow them to survive and thrive and make it in this world. They're using that same energy in the relationship and it just doesn't work. Absolutely. I've been there myself. I just, I've experienced all of those things that you just talked about. So what would be the first step? Let's say I would, you know, a client comes to you and she's really frustrated because things aren't working out and she doesn't seem to be attracting the kind of man that she wants. What would you have her do? Oh, uh, this is almost always her vibe. It's just in her energy. It's this invisible thing that our cells can speak to other people and exude and have around us. So it's always something in your vibe, which starts off with your thoughts. So you're thinking things, you're making judgments, you're in the future a lot of the times, you're thinking into the future. And so the first thing that I get you to do is drop down into your body, get into your feelings, and get away from the judgments and the future thinking. Because all of that muddles up your vibe, it really does. And you want to create like a nice, clear energy around you, nice, soft, feminine, inviting energy around you so your heart can be an invitation to men. And it's a real simple thing, but just by dropping your shoulders down and just letting go and getting to this just relaxed, passive place, sitting back in your seat, changing your body posture. This alone can make you like a man, a man magnet. I love to do that one before I go into Whole Foods. I love to sit in my car and, you know, get really into the soft, feminine, receiving energy and just watch the men just, just come out of nowhere. It's really fun to do. I love that. Thank you for sharing that tool. Yeah, I've definitely found just the tiniest shift in that direction can get a woman like that really strong, powerful woman the hugest results when it comes to the kind of men she's attracting. Pretty amazing how it works. So thank you. It, it really is. And I'll even sometimes, you know, sit in an outdoor cafe and um, I'll watch women walk by and I'll see women with their shoulders up high and maybe they've got on shoulder pads. I don't know, but <laughs> their shoulders are up high and they're walking fast and they're, you know, and they're just carrying this really masculine energy. I mean, they should be in the hallways of the office walking that way, you know, not here where they can really get some attention and get some masculine energy. So slow it all down, ladies, slow down your walk, allow your hips to move when you walk, allow your butt to shake. I mean, it, it works for a lot of women and it can work for you too. get into that feminine energy, you know, and, and have fun with it. See what happens. I love that. And, you know, I want to switch gears a little bit. So when it comes to, you know, women who are actually, they start dating and I hear from a lot of women who are frustrated because they seem to attract men who don't pursue them, who don't move the relationship forward. And this type of woman, like the strong, smart, intelligent woman can kind of be a magnet for feminine energy men who don't move things along. So what would you have a woman do if she's in that place? You know, you're so absolutely right on. We can sometimes not only be a magnet for feminine energy men, but we might like them better too. You know, we like, we might like the artist or the soft, expressive man. So do you want that all the time? So really, how do you take one of these more softer, um, you know, emotional, gentle guys and how do you get him to be in his masculine energy? And it's so interesting. Sometimes we can just attract exactly what we need, exactly the man we need into our life so we can learn. So one of the best ways you can activate his masculine energy is by leaning back. When you stop doing, when you stop controlling the situation, when you stop making the plans and setting the timeline, you know, um, I'll never forget one of my greatest sessions I had with you. You said, oh, you're setting a timeline. You're, you're telling him, this is my timeline. This is when I want this. That's boy energy. You're taking hold of the situation. So I love it to allow my client, clients to lean back. Let's see what the man does. So this starts with the very first contact from a man. Um, and I know, Helena, you and I both agree, if you're on a dating site, You've got to let that man contact you first. Even if it's a, hi, how are you? You know, they send these short little messages. We really don't like them. <laughs> but allow yourself to be contacted first. It starts with that very first contact with him. 
I totally agree. I online dated for years and years, you know, trying to figure out this stuff myself. And I always found when I was the one to message a guy first, he might respond, but it would never really materialize or he wouldn't really ever step up and try and talk on the phone or ask me out. So let's talk about online dating a little bit, if you don't mind, because Adrian is a total expert in this too. Let's start with uh, the profile. So what would you, uh, I know you're amazing at writing profiles for women. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, you know, what, what sort of profile attracts a masculine energy man? Oh, that's such a great question. So the, the best thing you can do is be expressive. A lot of us in our profiles, they, uh, a lot of us want to talk about our career because guess what? It's one of the most important things for us. So if you do mention your career, keep it to just a couple of lines and talk about what about your career feels passionate to you. Where's the passion in your career? So um, let's say you're a, an accountant and you help businesses grow, for example. And you could say that, I'm an accountant, I help businesses grow. And that's not really connecting with his heart. So instead you can say something like, oh, I feel so passionate about helping companies grow and succeed by helping them manage their money. You see, we're tapping more into that passionate feeling that you're having about your job. Um, you know, there are a lot of uh, other coaches out there that will, you know, suggest you do things like text a man, things like, oh, um, you know, I'm about to order pizza and I'm in my undies and I'm going to watch a movie. You want to come over? And I always tell them, you know, that sort of lure, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to attract some part of a guy's anatomy to you. <laughs> you know, it's going to attract some part of him to you, but we want you to be able to attract a man's heart. So that starts with your profile. It starts with you speaking from your heart about how things feel to you, how a date is going to feel to you, how going to your favorite restaurant. Give the guy ideas about where you want to go on a date and talk about how it would feel to be there with someone that you're really having fun with. I love that. That was really, those are some really good concrete tips. Um, what about pictures? I know pictures are really important when it comes to online dating. Do you have anything, anything to share about that? I do. I have, I have a really fun one. Um, so you're trying, you know, you're hoping to get a guy you're, to pique his interest and he might see face after face after face. And sometimes if it's a photo of you, next to something like a statue or something where the guy kind of can't tell what it is, it's going to pique his interest. All right. So I really believe in having your profile photo. Some people want to use just their face right here, but I think a man is going to be much more curious if he can't really tell what he's seeing. He's going to click on it and then he's going to go through your photos and kind of get to know you. I even have a theory, you know, a lot of, a lot of times people have, photos of them and their friends, them at a party, them with their family members. And you're like, wait, who am I looking at here? You have to scroll back through those photos a couple of times, you know? And even that can make that person stay on your photo, the man, and get a little more interested in you in finding out who you are. So don't post a ton of photos like this, but definitely have one next to you with an object of conversation and have something with you and some friends. Show him you have friends, show him you have family, and give him some pictures of interest to look at. You know, if you take a selfie, make it a selfie that counts. Um, you know, make it a selfie of you in a baseball stadium bathroom, you know, and he can see the, you know, the emblem, you know, Washington Nationals behind you or something like that. So make selfies that count that are gonna make conversation happen. That's what you wanna do with your photos as well as be honest, be truthful about your size and your shape. Um, definitely have one close up of your face. You know, you don't want to appear to be hiding anything. I love that. Those were some great tips on photos. I've actually never heard some of them before. So that was awesome. Thank you. Okay. Now I know you mentioned, you know, women do get irritated when men just message you hi, and this could apply to just texting too, or online dating. And you're totally an expert on texting and the technology of everything now. So I'd love to hear about what you have to say about that or how to get a guy to be a little more proactive or initiating when it comes to texting. Like pick up a phone and call 
call you maybe, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. What has happened? What's happened? Does anybody use a phone to call anybody anymore? Yeah. So, you know, one of my things I do with my dating program is that I want you to speak to the man on the phone before you meet him. Not for an hour. I don't want you to talk all night and figure out all these things you have in common. No, this is just a quick phone call. You're going to connect with him. You're going to hear what he sounds like. And you're going to be able to practice. You're going to start practicing with him immediately on the phone. So why is it so hard to get a guy to pick up the phone and call you? They'll text you all night. They'll text you in the morning. They'll text you on their lunch break. Why can't you call me? You know, so um, I've been working on some scripts and I've been testing them out. And the best, the, the kind of the rule of thumb here is have a couple of exchanges within the dating app. Start there, but just a couple. And you want to make this process happen quickly. You do not want to prolong it. You do not want a time waster. All right. And a lot of guys end up being time wasters. So go ahead and move right to, you know, after a couple of texts, wow, it would feel so great to speak with you on the phone. Here's your, here's my phone number. Okay. So, wow, it would feel so great to speak with you on the phone. Here's my phone number. The guy will go, cool, yeah, maybe I'll text you, maybe I'll call you sometime. And you go, that would feel amazing. And then he wants to keep texting with you. Don't. Cut it off. Stop it right there. That's your boundary. Okay? So then the next thing that happens is he texts your phone. And he goes, hey, it's me. And I want you to say hi. It feels so great to hear from you. Wow. Would feel so good to talk on the phone? What do you think? Question mark. All right? So if this man doesn't start calling pretty soon, <laughs> guess what? He's a time waster. He's got something else going on. Or he's got so many other women who are just texting him. So girls, unite on this. Do not become a text buddy with a man. Let's start a national, no, let's start a global movement. No more texting and texting and texting have the man pick up the phone and call you. So here's a bonus one. This one is uh, sort of something I'm experimenting with right now, but you're free to try it out. And this is after you've had some good contact with the man, maybe even gone on a date with him, but he's just not calling. And you really wanna hear from him a little more often, um, not with text. You know, even if it's a good night call or something like this. You're just, you're, you're feeling that text are dominating. So it goes along the lines of something like this. Um, you know, I, you would say to the man, uh, you know, I've been duped by guys in the past that just want to text me a lot. And it feels so good to finally meet a man who actually picks up the phone and calls me. And you just drop that one. And it feels so good to finally meet a man who picks up the phone and calls me and let him know that you appreciate those phone calls over text. I love that. Totally brilliant. I love what you're saying. So on one hand, it's, you want to find out if a man is a time waster right away and just drop him, I think is what you're saying, right? And then if you find one who does pick up the phone and ask you out and move it forward, really showing your appreciation and I could imagine a man kind of feeling like the man or feel like your hero which yeah amazing. <laughs> that's amazing okay so yeah so, you want him to be like i'm not like those other guys you want him to be like yeah i pick up a phone and call you know you're going to get him in that masculine energy and you want to go on that date as soon as possible with the guy you do not want this to turn into a long conversation that goes on for weeks I love that. Okay, so let's say the woman now is dating. You know, they've met in real life. And what are some tips for when she's on a date? Or, you know, how, how does the woman move from just sort of dating a guy or they met casually to a, a committed relationship, which is what we all want, right? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, that's such an interesting question because so many things, so many things can, can be happening with the timing, with that, how you're feeling, how he's feeling. Are you having sex yet? Um, you know, with most people I'm finding, sexual exclusivity talk comes before even committed relationship talk. 
Um, let's talk you, a little bit about that. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a really important thing to talk about. When you say sexual exclusivity talk, what does that look like? And yeah. <laughs> so it seems that most relationships these days work like this. You meet a man, you like him, you're still quantum dating, you're still circular dating, you're dating other men, you're meeting them for coffee, but you have met one guy you kind of like more than all the rest, and you have sex with him. So you have sex with him the first time, and that feels amazing and great, and he comes back to you because he wants to do it again. So this is when you have to say, you know, this feels really, felt really wonderful doing this the other night, and I so just want to, you know, jump into your arms, but, you know, I only have sex with one person, you know, I, I'm looking for sexual exclusivity, you know, how do you feel about that? And um, usually guys play a little bit dumb, <laughs> I have to be honest, and they, that word exclusivity, they, it scares them, it sounds like a relationship all of a sudden, but you're just letting them know, you know, I don't, I don't sleep with multiple people at one time, I'm a, you know, I'm sleeping with just one guy, you know, and if that's going to be you, I need to know that that's reciprocated. I need to know that you feel the same way. And, but you just want to give him the opportunity to say that. So you just lean back and say, well, you know, how do you feel about that? I'm curious. How do you feel about that? And give him the opportunity to stand up and uh, tell you how he feels about being sexually exclusive with you. You know what I love about that is you're not telling a guy, okay, I need you to be um, sexually exclusive with me or I'm never going to sleep with you again. It's the opposite. You're just leaning back. You're expressing what's important to you. And like you said, allowing him the opportunity to step up or not. And I just imagine most men, if a woman said that to them, would just be thrilled. Like, yes, absolutely. If, if he's the right man for her, especially. So I, I love that. And what would you say to a woman who has been dating a man for a while, maybe several months, and she is starting to feel, I know like strong, smart, successful women, we can tend to think ahead. Like we can tend to get all worked up about what is the relationship going to look like six months down the line or a year down the line. And we tend yeah. to do this because, you know, we, we want to plan things out, you know, especially this type of amazing, powerful woman that we're talking about. What, what advice would you give to her in that situation? Oh, oh, that's a tough one because, you know, I'm guilty of that. You're guilty of that. It's always so much fun to start getting ahead and figuring out how this is going to work. Um, so, you know, it really goes back to clarity and clearness on what it is you really want. You know, do you want to be a girlfriend? to this man? Do you want to be a wife to this man? What is it that you want to do? Getting that clarity, setting that intention is one of the most important things a woman can do. So often I talk to my clients and I say, well, you know, do you want to be married? And they pause and they say, yes, I don't want to be married. As if they've never said it to themselves before. And I want you to get really used to like, saying what it is you feel to yourself first, knowing what you want. And then you have to lean back and see where that man takes it. And that's the fun part. That's the part that used to feel so anxious to me. You know, having to like let him drive the car, not telling him where to go, not telling him when I needed this, but letting him know, yeah, I, you know, I want to be married one day. I do. And then he has to figure out how that's going to work for the two of you and when. And you lean back and you let him, but you make sure he knows it. I'm not going to be an infinite girlfriend. You know, I want to be a wife one day. And, um, you know, you're not saying I want to be a wife to you. You're just saying I want to be a wife one day. You're getting it out there. And then just keep practicing your tools. Keep, uh, you know, being in your heart, using your heart as an invitation and watch how it unfolds. It's amazing. You always get the right answer. You always have the right thing happen. One of my favorite sayings is, um, lean back, do nothing, and watch everything happen. It's that easy. I love that. I love that. And I can kind of hear, you know, the way I was in my past, I'm sure you can relate to this, and probably 90% of women listening, 
thinking lean back and do nothing that sounds so passive that sounds like i don't have any power in this relationship i just have to wait around for the guy to make all the decisions so what would you say to a woman who, who had asked you something like that i mean yes this is about letting go of control this is about getting into your feminine energy and letting that man take the lead this is what makes him masculine energy this is what allows him that space to be masculine so yeah it's gonna feel like you know your world is a little bit out of control but you're gonna start seeing things happen and that's when that magic happens that's that unexpected thing that you get from all of this work is that you really go from a place of you know feeling desperate unloved worried anxious to like oh you mean i don't have to do this stuff anymore i can just let the man do it i can let him know what feels good i can let him know when he's done the littlest thing that makes me feel wonderful he hands you a napkin he says thank you it feels so good thank you you're going to reward him for anything he does that feels good to you and men love to make a woman feel good so as long as you can stay in that place you're going to see things starting to unfold they will begin to happen like magic and then that's just going to keep you you know encourage you to keep doing more of those things yes i'm laughing over here because it is magical it is totally magical i mean it's just, i've experienced it myself i hear from women every day are like wow this really works it's really amazing so and like i said before just the tiniest shift in this direction towards your feminine energy can get you huge results so do you have any like specific tools or tips for women who are sort of feeling stuck up in their heads or in their masculine energy and they want to start to move in this other direction? Oh yeah. You know, one of my favorite things that I like to do is just practice non-judgment, practice non-judgment. So I tell everyone, you know, go out and take a walk in your neighborhood. And I want you to just tell me or tell yourself rather everything you're seeing and you'll begin to notice, you know, truck goes by and you go well there goes an old red truck an old loud red truck that's a judgment coming in that's a judgment creeping in so start looking at things as that's just a red truck the sky is blue um it's cold today it's hot today start trying to find things without them being having a judgment attached so when you get out of this place of judging everything and and taking away its opportunity before it's had a chance to grow really beautiful stuff can start to happen when you just let be playful be giggly be fly by the seat of your pants you know and and see what happens i love that be curious right be curious about the man who's right in front of you I see so many women who are just brilliant and powerful, amazing women, and they immediately go to judgment. I used to be this way myself, and it's sort of like showing myself how I was always judging myself, and it would manifest that way. I'm sure you can relate to that as well. So switching that judgment into playfulness and curiosity, I love that. I love that. Uh, any other, do you have any other tools like that? That was brilliant. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, when we're coming from this place, you know, with my guy, I, I met him on a date. Um, I didn't even know what he looked like. I was so flying by the seat of my pants. I wasn't even sure what he looked like. I, I was dating so many guys. And then, you know, I met him and I didn't like, you know, a couple of things. But overall, when I first met him, I was like, well, yeah, you know, this is, this is okay. I had to be open to it because, you know, when you're coming from this place, when you're rebounding from heartbreak of divorce, of a breakup, of losing someone you love, and you have to start all over again with someone new, we somehow believe that we're supposed to go on dates and that person's going to feel like the other person. And, and they don't, it's a completely new experience. You love in a new way um you know i kind of think of this about pets i've had over the years you know um i have you know a cat that is so special to me or a dog that was so special to me and eventually in life i get another pet 
Do you ever love them the same way twice? You don't. It's a completely new relationship and a new experience. But I am here to tell you that it just gets better. And Helena, maybe you can agree with me here. You think that the guy you've lost, you're never going to have anything that powerful again. And you actually end up much happier, much better. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh, I could not agree more with you there. Absolutely. Well, that brings up another point. What would you say to women who have just been hurt so many times by men and they're just frustrated and ready to give up? I know I just hear from so many women in that position. I'm sure you probably do too. Yeah, that's a tough one because if you're ready to give up, it's going to show in your energy. It's going to show in your vibe. And you're going to attract men who either don't want to invest in you or men that are ready to give up too. So that's a place where you really have to work that out. I can't sell you on the idea of love. You know, I can't sell you on the idea of marriage or romance or finding a partner. That's something that you have to absolutely decide that you want. That's your intention to know that you want to be married again, that you can be happily married and build something beautiful with a man. So once you can decide that that's what you want, all of that other stuff, you're just going to have to push it to the side. You're going to have to work it out. You're going to have to stomp the ground. You're going to have to get that emotion out of you and find out what you're feeling. So you can access your feelings without drama. You know, there's a difference between drama and emotions. You know, drama is sort of like this trapped emotion in your body and it comes out in drama but when you can find your emotions and you can just say how you feel to a man you're going to start to attract that in your energy these men who want to be around you and they gravitate to you they're going to feel so safe they can trust you you know yeah so yes. yeah yeah finding your feelings is just key to switching into that feminine energy. That can be difficult though for so many of us women. You know, a lot of women, I, I don't know about you, but I hear women who don't want to open up to a guy until he somehow proves himself or they just feel too vulnerable opening up. And I know that's a huge problem out there these days. What would you say about that? You know, um, someone has to be the bigger person. <laughs> someone has to make it safe. Um, and, and I'll tell you that on, on my first date with the man who is now my husband, um, I gave up being perfect a long time ago. I, 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 I want everyone to know I'm not perfect at feeling statements. I'm not always in my body. I don't always know the right thing to say. And that makes you quirky. That makes you interesting. That makes you fun. If you can laugh at yourself and you know, on the first date, I, I, I go out with him and these menus, they're the tall, you know, menus, and I open them up and it hit me right in the face. This, this menu. <laughs> and and you know, from and we have been laughing ever since that night. And you know, he ordered this big tall glass of water and he just hit it and it went right up against the wall. And it was like comedy of errors, our date, you know. And and but when you can show that person, I can laugh at myself. I can be quirky. I can laugh at myself. I can mess up. I can open my heart. I can cry. I can tell you how I'm feeling. I can tell you how beautiful the sunset looks tonight. You know, all these little things. I can tell you about these little squirrels I saw, you know, fighting over an acorn. You know, um, it's when you can open up your heart to all of those things, that's when you have the man right here. Because he wants that. He wants that safety and that trust with a woman. And if you can do that with yourself, you can do it with him, and he'll love you forever for it. That is so true. Oh my gosh, I could just not agree with you more on that. The men really do fall in love with you for your quirks or what you would perceive to be a flaw. And we tend to want to hide those things and not show them to anyone. And I love how you put that. That was beautiful. So if there was just you know, maybe your top three things you, you could say to a woman who's, like we said, strong, smart, successful woman who's having a hard time in her love life. What is like the, maybe the top three tips or words of wisdom or anything like that, that you could say to a woman in that position? Um, they are all the same thing, which is love yourself first, love yourself the most, totally love all parts of yourself. It is so cliche. You can't go anywhere on the internet without seeing the words you have to love yourself first and I used to just click onto something else too 
Um, I used to go, here we go again. I've heard this before. Love myself. Love yourself is not about giving yourself pedicures and manicures and buying yourself nice clothes. Loving yourself isn't about, um, you know, not jumping out in front of a bus. Loving yourself means you love everything, the icky stuff, the scary stuff, the selfish, the manipulative. You love all parts of you. So um, there's no better place to practice this than in, in the shower <laughs> in the morning um, or at night. When you get in the shower, there's, you know, there's no phone, there's no iPad, there's no distraction. You're going to start having a lot of thoughts in the shower. I don't know if that happens to you, Helena. Yes, absolutely. Of course. <laughs> Brain starts going and, and, and all sorts of nasty sometimes or worries or fears or memories. Sometimes you'll just have a memory out of nowhere. And I want you to be able to say, oh, I love the part of myself that's remembering what happened to me when I was 10 years old. I love the part of me that's feeling like I'm not going to be good enough on this date tonight. I love the part of me that feels 10 pounds too heavy. I love that part of me. And when you can do those things and you can love yourself, you're going to be like a magnet to a man because this is not a beauty contest. Winning a man's heart is not a beauty contest. You have to attract him, like you say, on that gut level. He has to see your heart just shining. And that's what's going to pull him to you. So really loving yourself, knowing yourself, being able to get in your body and find those feelings and being able to express them. Those are my top three, but that all starts with just loving yourself. I love that you gave that very specific tip, you know, because everyone says like, oh, just love yourself and be yourself. But what does that mean? You know, and if it were that easy, yeah. I'll be doing it already. Right. So I am going to try that next time I'm in the shower. <laughs> when the thoughts oh, yeah. Come, just I love that. I think that was totally brilliant. Um, Adrian, thank you so much. This was so much fun. I always love talking with you. And I know this was really helpful for everybody. Where can people learn more about you or, you know, find you and sign up for, you know, do you have any anything to offer people who want to learn more about you? Oh, thank you so much for having me, Elena. And yes, I would love to share with everyone some really fun stuff I have. I make dating fun. And I have a program called Dating Unzipped. I do this through my one-on-one -on -one coaching with you. I have a program called New Man Manifesto, which is all about attracting the partner you want, getting very specific, unlocking the blocks and the things that get in your way, opening up to you know this endless world of possibilities with meeting a man. So just head on over to my website. It's everheartcoaching.com. You'll get a free little book when you sign up for my newsletter. And it has some tips about things you can post on Instagram, Facebook, or email or text. Always how you can begin watching this magic unfold with a man, totally based on the words you say, coming from the feelings in your body. All right. I hope everyone checks that out, everheartcoaching.com. And Adrian, thank you so much again. I hope I get to talk to you soon. Oh, you too, Helena. Mwah. Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to discover exactly what to say and do to get the man and relationship you've always wanted, click the button on the right side of this video to visit our website. And I will talk to you soon.